have two amazing people here on stage with me. Their names are Pietri and Valde. And they are our new missionaries to work under Hope Church in Mongu in Zambia. <laughs> so today's our official Sunday where we send them off. So it's a significant Sunday for us. Did you have a good week? Have a good week. We had a busy week and a fun week. We had Easter outreaches to less privileged children and then our youth. We thought we should mention our youth. They had such a nice end of term party. It's also like an outreach. We want our Christian teenagers to be able to bring their unsaved friends to church. And then our young adults, that's matric to 25, also had a really fun time last Sunday. But we're going to take up our tithes and offerings now. If you came prepared, you can please get ready for that. There's so many different ways you can give. You can do online giving, you can do SnapScan, you can do EFT, and you can put your giving in the basket when the basket comes around. If you're watching from Vintuk, from our Vintuk location, hello everyone. Happy Easter. We also have banking details for you in Vintuk. You can go onto our website and find that there. Hello to the parents in the parents' room, right? Yeah. We hope you're doing well. So good to have you with us. Let's pray for the giving. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that we can be in your house today, celebrating that you are alive. And Lord, we know everything we have belongs to you. And we just pray that you'll continue to bless us, to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. I love Hebrews 2 verse 10. It says, everything we have belongs to God. When it comes to giving, that's an easy verse to remember. But Pietri and Valdu, aren't they a lovely looking couple? In the first service, we had the interview and... Their chairs were too far apart. So now for the service, we move them closer to each other. Because they are saying, I do, on Saturday. <laughs> so I think you should practice a kiss. <laughs> oh, they're so lovely. <laughs> so inspiring. Young people, watch how they do it. They're doing it right. Can I just say that? But Pietri. You were now in Zambia already for three months. And tell us, how did God speak to you? How did God call you to Zambia specifically? So last year I went with Hope Church George on the outreach to Zambia. And while I was there, I just prayed and asked God, what does he want me to do now that I've seen the need in Zambia? And I felt him say to me that there will come an opportunity for me to work with the project. And I was very excited, but I also had a job lined up in Cape Town two weeks after I got back. Um, so in my mind, I was like, okay, in the future sometime. And then on our way back, we stopped in Namibia for the night and I was talking to Mornai Kitchen, one of the leaders in our church. And he just asked me, what am I thinking? Where am I at? And I just told him everything. And he encouraged me to not put it off, but actually to see if God means it right now. And he encouraged me to talk to Marinette about it. So I phoned Marinette and I explained the whole situation and I asked, would there be an opportunity for me to work with the project? And she said yes, which I was quite taken aback by because I thought she was going to be like, let's talk about it when you get back, you know, like calm down. Um, but yeah, and it wasn't an easy decision because I had to choose what God wants me to do over what I want to do. And that's not always the easiest decision, but I did make the decision, and I am incredibly happy that I did. I love to hear how God calls people, hey? So when I saw the call coming from the outreach in Zambia, I thought, there's an emergency. So I'm like, hello? <laughs> Hi, it's Pietro. I'm like, what? Is everything okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you may just hear I said yes. It was, there's a big story behind it. Pietri got saved in our church. We saw her grow in a walk with God, grow in a leadership, continue to take the next steps here. She was part of our leadership college. And, you know, ministry is not for people that can't do anything else. 
I just want to say that again, because sometimes Satan tells people this lie that if you can't make it in the real world, go get a job at church. It's not at all the truth. So Petrie actually had in matric straight A's for accounting, for maths, for Afrikaans, for English, everything. She could, in my opinion, go do anything, but God called her, and we need more and more strong people, intelligent people in the kingdom as God's kingdom's advancing. But I shouldn't preach about that now. I'm just so, that's why I said, yes, <laughs> we need you. She oversees our fundraising um, and, as well as Hope Art, and she's just an incredible leader. But Valdu, okay, so you were dating. She goes to Zambia, and you, <laughs> Saki's is laughing behind me. He's so enjoying it. Also, also still needs a wife. But... Um, <laughs> He's not paying me for this, but he's awesome, by the way, so, um, and gifted and everything. So how did it, what did you think when your girlfriend came back and she said, hey, God's calling me to move to Zambia? I was very confused, and uh, <laughs> I didn't understand why this decision was made without me being there. I thought we are going into the future <laughs> together, but nonetheless, we prayed about it, and after, I think, about three or four hours on the phone, I had to buy data again. Um, we came to the conclusion that whatever, whenever God speaks to us, we have to obey Him. So we, we, we said, God is the sense of our relationship. God is the sense of our lives. We're going to keep it that way. And God gave us a verse in Isaiah 58, verse 11. And we are clinging on to that. And we just know that with God in the center, God will make a way for us both to be in Zambia. Brilliant. God doesn't speak to be heard. He speaks to be obeyed. And God speaks. He does tell us what He wants us to do. We just need to tune into His voice. And the more obedient we are, the clearer we hear His voice. Can I say that again? Maybe somebody needs to hear this. If you're struggling to hear God's voice, obey Him in what He's already told you to do, and you will hear His voice more clearly. Um, Petri, I love this. You can see her. Um, tell us a bit about the past three months that you were in Zambia already. It's been incredible. The people in Zambia are amazing and just their hearts for, for the church and to make God's kingdom bigger is incredible. And I've learned so much from them and from their experience. Um, it hasn't been easy getting used to a new culture, a new language, a new everything. All on my own has been quite overwhelming, um, but I wouldn't change it for anything, and I am very grateful that I actually got to experience it first on my own and just get used to everything, and now Baldi gets to come up and I get to show him the ropes of how everything works, <laughs> but yeah, it's just been incredible to see how all of the different departments of the project work together to accomplish the vision of extending God's kingdom and plant planting life-giving churches in Western Zambia. So just to give you context, in Zambia, under Hope Church, we employ over 200 local people, and church planting is exploding. we primarily a church planting organization that tells people who have never heard about the name of Jesus that there is a God in heaven who loves them. That's our mandate. With that, we bring a lot of upliftment, like water and caring for orphans and medical care and translating the Bible and so on. But Number one is church planting. That's what we do. And it's exploding and we need help. Um, I think we estimate there's over 12,000 people in our churches every Sunday. So Valdo is going up to help with our church planting team. What a privilege. Are you excited? Very excited. Um, I think what I'm most excited about is just to see God move and the gospel being spread to the lost people in Western Zambia. Um, also, what a privilege to work with some of the local missionaries there, learning about their culture, just seeing the faith and what drives them, I'm most excited about just being part of that team and just learning. Um, and yeah, I had the privilege about four or five years ago, back in 2018 and 2019, to go to Zambia. Before Pietri went. So yes, you know, went be, first. Before, before Pietri. <laughs> uh, I just, uh, I had experience along with Niku and Almiro and some of the amazing leaders in our church and we, we went there, we gave them the gospel. I'm just so excited to go back to some of those areas mm -hmm. just to see that the difference the gospel is making in their lives and the, mm -hmm. the life-giving churches in that area. It's just it's a amazing. fire. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It's amazing to see, to see two young people, young adults, and um, just want to encourage you, take your next steps. They've consistently taken their next steps. Okay, they lost to Jesus, got water baptized, and you know, I feel you're both loyal 
to myself and Paul and to the Hope Church family. We trust you, and that all counts a lot. I feel you've got our backs, and it makes a big difference. So when we say love our family, love our church, God will bless you. When we honor him, he will honor us. And another next step story I love is a young girl, Lydia, Lydia van Amarva. She's beautiful, and she gave a life to Jesus at a young age, but then got into the wrong crowd. But someone invited her to church. She came to our church and went to summer camp, our youth camp. And there she said she resurrendered her life to Jesus, and everything changed. Came back, started volunteering at kids' church, loving it. And then now she said, I want to be a leader. So she did our leadership training, and she now leads a sisterhood small group. So amazing. I want to encourage you. Sign up for our small group leadership training this coming Saturday. We also ask that all our existing leaders will come so we can all just spend time together. And then next Sunday, we're launching small groups again. So if you're not yet in a small group, now is your time to sign up for a small group. Or maybe you want to try another small group, like doing a different course or something like that. That's totally awesome. Petrie, how can people support you? So... Our biggest need is prayer. We definitely need a lot of prayer to carry us through. Mm. And we have a monthly newsletter where you can sign up and get our prayer requests and just see what is happening in Zambia and everything that we are up to. One of our other big needs is we need financial support. We need to raise funds to support ourselves every month in Zambia. So if you would like to find out more about that or just in general about the project, we're going to be under the tent after the service and you can just come and talk to us. So it's not just Valde under the tent this Sunday, it's Valde and Petri under the tent. Uh, Petri mentioned their biggest need is prayer. It always will be, because prayer works, and everything we see that's happening is an answer to prayer. So if you honestly can only pray, you're doing something awesome. <laughs> We're a church of prayer, and I'm just looking now at all our praise reports that's come in from people we've been praying for. Nicola Williams got her job. She's been praying for. Alfreda's daughter is healed. Kubis Gerber is now registered as a counselor. Um, and is trusting God for his master's in educational psychology. Ray Marie also said she's, she's healed. San Marie Ace says her um, father only had 10% heart function in January. We prayed for him and he's actually really doing well. And a big favorite... A little baby was born in our church family called Hendra. It's Zandri and Enku's little baby. She said, I'm going in, and then I hear nothing. I'm like, is there news? <laughs> Blue tick, yes, there's the baby. Absolutely gorgeous. So exciting. But we got new print requests in a lot. I'm holding them all in my hand here. Wanique, young lady in her cities, is struggling with very painful varicose veins, and we're going to pray for her. Bianca Gerber is praying for in-laws to come to church. And Aubrey Powell is praying for employment. And yeah, so many requests for salvations as well. But let's all stand and get ready to pray. First of all, we're going to pray for Pietri and Valdi because we're officially sending them off. So if you feel comfortable, you can just stretch your hands out to them as we lift them up into God's hands and watch their journey. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this young couple that's saying yes to you. God, it's, it's so much more than just a yes. It's a lifetime of being transformed into your image, Lord, of putting you first, valuing your church, honoring their leaders. So Lord, we just know as they honor you, you're going to honor them. And we know they're going to be so victorious in this journey as missionaries in Zambia. We pray that you'll give them everything they need, that they'll never lack anything, that you'll keep them safe, that your protection will be like a wall of fire around them, Lord Jesus. Go ahead of them. Be with them. Be all around them, Lord Jesus. And I pray that they'll be so successful in their work that we'll continue to receive praise reports of people coming to Christ. The harvest is ripe. 
and the workers are few. What an honor for us as a Hope Church family to send them off this morning. And Lord, we lift up all our other prayer needs into your hands for healing for those that need healing, for salvations for our friends and our families, our brothers, our sisters, our moms, our dads, and our children, our sons and daughters, Father God. Lord, we're never going to stop trusting you because we know you love us and there's nothing you cannot do. In Jesus' name, amen.